Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Spotlight on Black Owned Brands, sponsored by 216 Beat Radio Station and TT Entertainment. This is episode 33. Hey guys, it's Cream, aka Miss Cream of the Crop, and you guys know what it is. It's Spotlight on Black Owned Brands. And as always, I tell you guys that I'm excited. But I am. I'm excited every single time I get to introduce you to new Black Owned Brand owners. So this time, for episode 32, I'm introducing you guys to the Little Grapevine, and if you guys pay attention to my page, you know the two, well, the three top drinks on my list are water, coffee, and wine. Yeah. <laughs> so, even though I'm always excited to interview all of our black-owned brand owners, this, this, this brand, I'm even more excited to interview because... <laughs> We're going to be talking about one of my three favorite things to drink. <laughs> they look just like me. So let's do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. So how are you guys this afternoon? Please interest, uh, introduce yourself to everyone. Well, my name is LaShawn Little, and uh, this is my wife, Tia. And we are the Little Grapevine Wine Company. Yes. Um, Cleveland, um, Cleveland um, based family-owned business uh, we started about a year ago doing this yeah well, we start manifesting okay a year ago well we actually yeah a year ago we came up with our first promo blend and okay. so yeah I love that you said manifesting because that's something that I'm really digging you know really yeah. digging. as you guys see I have all my stuff back here for some reason I thought it would be a, a great idea to do your interview here. Nice. Um, and I normally do it in the radio studio, but I'm doing it like this is like my partial office. It's a huge room. This is where I have like all my makeup and clothing and things like that. But for some reason, something said do it in here on your wall. And you guys probably can't see it, but I have like vision boards on this wall. Mm. I have my rose quartz on this table. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I have oh, yeah. a lot of like all my little stuff yeah. in here. So it's just, you know, everything happens for me. Yeah. 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 Big, big on manifestation and uh, ancestral uh, assistance for sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what made you guys say, let's do wine? Well, I've always been, well, we collectively, we've been together for a very long time since, um, been friends since eighth grade, um, went to high school together, uh, went to college together, and that's when we kind of just really just got together. Um, and all through, uh, well, I would say my senior year of college, I really got into the wine culture myself, my husband and I. And um, we were never big party people, but we always loved to go to vineyards and things like that when we wanted to celebrate an anniversary, birthday. And we just said that one last year on his birthday, it was like, we should do it ourselves. We should sell wine. Mm-hmm. And so... Lo and behold, my husband just decided to ask the person at this particular vineyard we were at, and they showed us the ropes, how to do it, how to start it, how they started it, Um, and they gave us this book, and we just started researching from there, and last year on my birthday, uh, the 24th, we introduced our red blend. Diablo Rojo, we call it Royal Four. Um, it is a Merlot, a uh, great wine, um, beautiful finish from, well, beautiful start and beautiful finish. Um, and we use that wine to kind of gauge our, our, our customer base. We wanted to know how much um, the people or our demographic enjoyed wine because if you can if you can enjoy a Merlot then you're really a, a you know a you're kind of into that culture of drinking wine and so most of our family and friends love sweet so <laughs> we had to reel it back in and come with more sweeter wines and blends and now we are at about nine different blends yes I'm one of those wine drinkers that um I always tell people that want to rely on sweet wines 
as the, as you know, they like to say, oh, I don't like the sweet wines. I'm like, no, you like Kool Aid. You don't like wine. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yes, you it's like Kool Aid. You you prefer wine coolers. Yes. 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 So but we say, oh yes, I love wine. I drink Mama mm-hmm. Moscato. I'm like, uh, no, you don't drink wine, babe. Yeah, you drink Kool-Aid. Yes, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely a culture um, that we, you know, as our demographic is just now really getting into. Um, it's an acquired taste uh, most times, and it's not a, um, a quick hitter like liquor. You know what I mean? Like, you know you're going to take a couple shots of liquor. You know what you're getting. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's kind of a... It's a time, you know, uh, it's a culture, you know what I mean, and a, a good space and time, you know what I mean, yeah. a glass of wine, and I'm trying to, like, introduce men to, you know, I guess, you know, these red wines, you know what I mean, because it's really culture for women, women r- really talk about wine and all of that, so I like to have a Merlot with a cigar, you know, with a... Uh, Bacon cheeseburger, <laughs> you know what I mean? A good steak. A good steak, yeah, definitely a good steak, a salmon or something like that. Uh, just to like get the idea like, hey, men can indulge in this too, you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and the cool thing for guys is the, the stimulus glasses. I think for men, I think the way the glasses look makes it real yeah, feminine. Right. <laughs> but they do make stemless glasses for any guys that are watching. You know they make stemless wine glasses, and you can look very manly holding your right. glass of wine in a stemless wine glass. Right. But I think it's really cool, and then you guys tell me what you think about this. I think it's really cool how LeBron James has really been one of the more manly guys, if you want to call it. Um, that's not afraid to say, hey, I love wine. I relax with my wine. He's always posting what wine he's drinking. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin Hart is someone else that always posts mm-hmm. his wine. I think mm-hmm. The Rock also drinks wine as well. So, mm-hmm. you know, how do you guys um, feel about athletes and more manlier guys saying, hey, I drink wine. How does that help you guys out? I mean, that helps. I, it would help a whole lot mm-hmm. if LeBron can have some of this. <laughs> no, but it, I guess it helps to, just like I was just saying, it helps to kind of break that wall or that mold of the macho, liquor, strong, hair-chested, whiskey type thing. And it's, it's, it's a lot more smoother. It's a uh, it's a calming down time for men that really, you know, we need to indulge in. Um, I, I would love to, like, you know, uh, for for a lot more athletes and actors and, you know, people like that to indulge in, and, and kind of just let it be known. And, in fact, there are a few. Shaquille O'Neal has a vineyard. Um, E-40. E-40 in Oakland. Mm-hmm. Uh, if there's a few... Um, athletes and um, hip hop artists that actually have their own wine brands, mm-hmm. including Mary J. Blige. She just came out with her own wine brand. She so it's did. definitely picking up in the black culture. Yes. Um, one thing that one of um, our Caucasian counterparts told us is that um, we are in a good space right now with the wine because he feels that perhaps. Uh, his demographic has have worn it to the ground, but we can add something different to it. So that's what I was gonna. I was telling my husband, we're gonna bring the culture to wine. The, hey, the I love culture it. to wine. Yeah, I love it. And I think one of the things that does help you guys also right now is black people are really focused on luxury. <laughs> For a really long time, black people didn't really think that they deserve luxury or luxury wasn't made for us. And a lot of luxury brands made it seem like luxury items weren't made for us. But you have Diana who started her fancy line and people were looking at the prices and she's like, no, this is luxury. Luxury. And you start to see more black designers making luxury clothing lines Mm -hmm. and you start to see more um, black women dress themselves in a way that is it more hip hop or urban? But mm-hmm. I'm, a suit. I'm a doctor, I'm an attorney, I'm an entrepreneur, and I carry luxury bags. I wear luxury yes. bags. So I think what works in you guys' favor too 
is that black people are starting to be more into luxury and having a luxury lifestyle. Mm. So that's the way that you guys can introduce that too, because people are starting to say, hey, get used to it. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. And I think open your palate. Exactly. And I think for us for so long, we've been used to being the worker bees. Ah, and yes. So really just, we were taught, be appreciative for what you have. Be yes. comfortable. Right. Everyone's like, yes. hey, I can be appreciative of what I have and, and enjoy every item. Yeah, Absolutely. You know? I think this this is perfect timing just for black people as a culture, period. Uh, we are we are recognizing our strengths, you know, in finance. We are recognizing our educational uh, uh, experiences. And, and, and I feel like we're settling in our natural way, you know, right now, as far as the luxury. We do come from kings and queens. This God. is what we're supposed to be doing. This Indeed. is how we're supposed to live. We come from Absolutely. creativity, yes. Absolutely. And we, you know, um, as we settle into this, of course, um, you know, we need to, you know, be able to reach to one another for everything, everything, literally everything. And it's so possible that uh, that can happen within a community, black, black community that we just, I just want to be a part of the driving force uh, that, um, you know, starts that give and take with one another and, and starts that, that open arms, if you will, with, with uh, other businesses and other uh, uh, levels of people so that we can pull each other up, you know, and uh, yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. We were just thinking about having our own little uh, wine tasting with all the black owned wine brands within the Cleveland and Northeast Ohio area. Um, because it's never a competition as much as it is in, in, go, in, in uh, embracing this culture of wine and everybody's creativity and what they put into their wines. And it's just something that should be shared um, um, amongst everyone in the community. I, you're absolutely right because if you look at the actual um, market for spirits and liquor and different things like that, you have the top shelf brands that are still thriving and they have been affected by lower price liquor at yeah. all. You know, Kamchaka, which is like what, $4. Right. It's still on the shelf. It's on the brand. It's on, it's it's on the shelf. Exactly. It hasn't affected Kettle One or Indeed. any of the other you know, uh, smoother vodkas out there. So that's something that I feel like our community is starting to learn how to do also, and that is coexist. Yes. Yes. As successful people. Because again, you know, a lot of us weren't taught to be the owners mm -hmm. and be successful. We were taught to be the workers. So those days yeah. beyond being a worker, they're kind of like, Oh, but I gotta stay here by myself because if somebody yeah. else is here, that I won't be able to be here too. Right. You know, it's us. But it's not like what Jay Z said. What's the point of being the wealthiest of all your friends if my so friends are the only one to do what I do? Indeed. Then there's no point of me being wealthy if my friends can't okay. come with me. Indeed. So I think yeah. we're starting to learn how to coexist as mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. I think we're starting to learn how to coexist as being successful people. Mm -hmm. And I really think that we are starting to learn how to live a more sustainable life, you know, not being afraid to live luxury or purchase luxury yes. items. And we're not afraid to be ourselves right now. In our natural, yes. Exactly. In our natural. We, we really just have to realize. I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, I just want to uh, just reiterate a little bit about the collectivism, how important it is, you know. I mean, once we realize that power, it's going to be easy. You know, it, it, it'll be easy, it'll be daily, it'll be all the time. And that's what we really need right now, to be a force to be reckoned with all the time. And with us, uh, you know, coming together, that's a that's a huge... Yeah. It's huge. It's just like the Transformers, how everybody okay. just put oh, their Voltron. pieces... Yeah, Voltron. <laughs> <laughs> that's how everybody just that's collectively really, that's a really put their analogy. pieces together. Yeah. Once we put our pieces together, mm. we're so much more powerful. 
Um, yes. then we are separated. Yes. And once we understand that idealism and can act on it, because what I always love to say is knowledge is not powerful unless it's applied. So once we can actually apply that knowledge that we have learned over the years, shake off those generational curses that have been uh, instilled in us that if each man for himself and, you know, things that just don't make sense economically. Right. Um, once we can come together collectively and use that spirit of uh, of community and, and 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 supporting each other, then we can be the next Black Wall Street. Like we can do this again Indeed. in each inner city community. Like each inner city community can do this. Absolutely, I mean, you're you are one hundred percent correct. I think that we are now seeing that we can sustain ourselves with our own dollars. You are seeing all of these entrepreneurs that are posting their sales and they're saying, oh my God, you guys sold out all my products. I can't believe you guys sold or purchased all my products. I think we need to understand how powerful our dollars really are. Yeah. I think that it's amazing. I love being a part of all of this. This is the reason that I do spotlight on black owned brands because it takes a community and we have to, it's okay to recognize that we have generational curses. We mm -hmm. have to let them go. go. I feel yeah. like we have been holding on to them for so long and we haven't been doing it alone. We've been holding on to generational curses with assistance because <laughs> other communities yeah. love reminding us about black on black crime. Other communities yeah. love reminding us how we're not um, professional. They love reminding us about they love reminding us of our shortcomings and then we to absorb those negative mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. and then say, well, you know, black people, I try to support a black owned brand and then this person, I hated their customer service so I'm not going there anymore. It's like they want us to continue to do that. But yeah. we have to understand that you can get mm -hmm. horrible service anywhere and we've all had horrible service everywhere. It right. <laughs> going everywhere. So why yeah. to our community. So we have to not only recognize those generational curses, because you have to, in order to learn how to get over them and through them, and mm -hmm. overcome them. So it's okay to recognize, yes, we have had to deal with having a late start. There are other yeah. people that have had a head start. Okay, yeah. now that we know that, are we gonna continue to discuss that mm -hmm. and dwell on that fact? Or are we going to discuss Discuss those things and figure out how we can start from right now so mm -hmm. that the next generations aren't continuing to talk mm -hmm. about, hey, we got a late start. I yeah. want the next generations to say, hey, yes, we had a late start, but I remember back in 2020, the worst year of our great, great <laughs> yeah. They all came together and realized that black people weren't using their power like they should, and they broke all those generational curses. And because of them, we now have a better yeah. day. And that's really important to me, which is why I don't yeah. have a problem with supporting other black owned businesses. I don't have a problem with doing spotlight on black owned brands because, as you said, Tia, we have to break this together. Yeah together and no one yeah. expects us to do it together. They they like when we're individually wealthy. They like when look they like when Oprah's wealthy and it's just yeah. a Oprah free network. And they like when people like her don't tell you how they got there. Right. <laughs> so they like when Michael Jordan is wealthy. That doesn't yeah. that doesn't um Reach back. scare them. That doesn't yeah. really scare them. It doesn't tell uh -huh. you but then when you get a LeBron James, and then you get a Steph Curry, and then you get, you just continue to make all these millionaires that look like Michael Jordan. They're like, wait a minute, we hate LeBron. He's doing too much because he's bringing all his friends with him. Mm -hmm. Now all his friends are rich, and then all his friends are empowering other people to be rich too. Right. We hate him. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and that's what they—that's the agenda they push. Absolutely. Exactly. They know how to publicly destroy people. We we know we know their tactics already. So yeah. you know, as a people, we have to move very very smart. You know, right now, 
and code, you know, strategic, um, all these things. And, and we have to be a bit co covert uh, to um, some of our power moves, if you will, you know. We have to, have to, we have to always tell people we have to stop telling something all of our business. <laughs> Period. Period. Yeah. You have to just think back to your grandma and your mom. Yeah. Whatever happens in this house, it's that yeah. right. Yeah, absolutely. We have to learn how to stop telling the company our business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, just for a little duration of time so we can get get a foundation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. We have to also think about, uh, even if we take it back to the Underground Railroad, I'm sure they had meetings that were meetings so that those meetings could happen so things could happen. Absolutely. Yeah. If, if they had their meetings on their version of social media, no one would have been able to be moved from one place to another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they would be working together a lot more. Yeah. A lot yeah. smoother. Exactly. Yeah. So for anyone out there, that looks at your brand and as inspiration what are some things that you guys could or pieces of advice that you could give them if they are interested in starting their own wine company um the most important thing is to research yes you definitely want to do your research because there's so many licensing um that comes especially if you're in ohio Ohio has a lot of different laws and permits that you have to do, um, go through. So you want to do your research on the permits that are needed, the type of licensing, whether you're going to manufacture it yourself or just be a wholesaler, just depending on how you want to move your brand. Um, and then also gauge your audience Absolutely. to understand what they enjoy, what type of palette that they have yeah. so that you have a variety um, of blends that um, are pleasing to your audience. Um, also be innovative. Like with us, we definitely had to be innovative. As we started um, our wines uh, last year, uh, because wine takes a long time to make. Right. Um, it takes months it, to get it to the the, the, the right. alcohol level that you want it to be, the taste, mm -hmm. um, the clear, the clarity, you know, things like that. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you're able to have enough supply <laughs> for your audience. And when I say be innovative, us creating our wine last year, we did not know that a pandemic would hit um when it was time to launch the wine so here that takes away our ability to have a launch party um uh, to have a group of people in one room so that we are able to sell this wine so what we did was we created wine on wheels and what we offered was a local wine delivery service um, because because of pandemic, it slowed down our shipping license. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't ship out of town. We had to do something to, to still get our wine out there. And actually, pandemic was the perfect time because we had everyone's attention on social media. Because right. that's what a lot of time was being spent because everyone's sharing information you know, about what's going on in the world. On top of that, we're adding a little joy to people's lives by <laughs> delivering wine, you know? Yes. And um, it, it, that really grabs a lot of people's attention because like you said, a lot of times, people don't want to support, you know what I'm saying? Because they're just like, okay, I see what they're doing, that's good but they're not really purchasing and for us we never really expected for it to blow up like that we just wanted to get the word out indeed and the wine on wheels just is like took off to a point where we couldn't mm. keep wine you know so we started kept, just kept making it and making it and making it um so just being innovative innovative in the space that you're in where, wherever um you are in that space of time making sure that you have a product for that customer base. We also do virtual wine tastings, which um, um, the older, more mature crowd likes because they really don't want to gather um, with just different ailments, health issues, and things like that. So we prepare um, a variety wine box of um, a four or five ounce drink, four or five ounce wines, and we put like cheese, crackers, um chocolates and then we deliver it to each individual and then we do a virtual wine tasting through zoom so just just creating different um avenues 
right. to keep your brand alive no matter what's going on. And I would just say also um, to just stay with it. You know, uh, a lot of times, well, not really a lot of times, but just so many obstacles started to come where it was just like, oh my God, oh my God, you know, we got, it's, we never wanted to quit, but it was just a little, you know, some obstacles. And I would just suggest that people, uh, when that comes up, just stay focused, um, stay, stay inspired and motivated um, and know that, you know, whatever you're putting yourself into as far as you want to put 100%. Um, you not just put 110% as a matter of fact. And knowing where we're coming from in Cleveland, if there's anybody in Cleveland, you know what it is here. If you make it, you can do something, <laughs> you can do it. You know yeah. what I mean? So, if you can make it out of this city, indeed. you literally can make it anywhere. <laughs> yeah. And, and also, we have good products. Like, right. we have good wine. Yes. So good. that helps. So once, yes. once, once, once one person knows, 10 people know, once 10 people know, 50 people know so it, it, it that helps as well and having great being customer centric yeah. so if we say we're going to deliver your wine at this time we're going to be there at this time if we cannot be there you better believe we're going to communicate that and be very transparent with our clientele so they they know you know they're offering a service to me and i appreciate that service versus you know the 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 the, the curse of um, black business is not doing good business. So kind of changing that dynamic, you know what I'm saying? So great, great product and great customer service. Absolutely. And I, I have had fewer experiences of bad customer service with black owned brands than I have had amazing um, mm. brands. I think that for some reason, and like I said earlier, we amplify that by only talking about our bad experiences failures. Yeah. and failures. But to be honest with you, I always, like this whole Black Friday, I only purchase from black owned brands is Black Friday. That's it. And I had one hiccup with one brand and it wasn't their fault. I reached out to her, she messaged me right back and we figured out what the issue was. It wasn't her, or her company. It has something to do with one of the companies that she uses for the pay, the payment services. And okay. <clears throat> so for me, Again, this is why I do this because I think that most people speak the loudest when they have horrible service. Oh. And they seem like collectively black people aren't good at customer service. Black people right. aren't that's so not true. Indeed. Because I know I offer good customer service with my people. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. I know it's that intentional. I do. <clears throat> yes. And I think it is really amazing how you guys found ways to still keep your brand afloat. Bring in new customers, give your existing customers what they want and what they need from your brand. And as you stated before, it takes a long time for the fermentation to happen and for the wine to be exactly where it's supposed to be. So honestly, it was a great thing that we had a pandemic because that just gives the wine a little bit more time to ferment. <laughs> yeah. so when I order my bottle, I can enjoy with a little bit more percentage of tipsiness. So, yeah, there you go, <laughs> yeah, there you go. The positivity is everything. Mm -hmm. And this pandemic, I think it said a lot of us business owners and entrepreneurs back a little bit, but it actually made those of us that were determined to continue to, to go, um, it made it, if you're creative, it made you even more creative. If you weren't creative, it made you creative. creative. Yes. yes. I think that this was, honestly, I feel like it was a good thing because it made people think of different ways to do things with their business that they probably would have never thought about if they had right. had all the adversity. Mm -hmm. so yes. In that type of way, like, yeah, it took some money away from some of us. But um, on, the, on, the, on the other flip side, I think it also gave us a lot of opportunity to be still so that we could find out about businesses mm. like the grapevine and other businesses that we might not have heard of before. Yeah. So in that aspect, I try to find things that I can be appreciative of in that situation. Yeah. So yeah. I would say um, finding out about more businesses like you guys having more time to sit down and actually see what people are posting and see them promote their businesses and their brands. 
I think that that's one of the positives of the pandemic. Another thing that I like that you guys did or are doing um, is the wine tasting. Like you talked about the wine tasting for the older crowd. I think that's really amazing. And you had the crackers and the cheese and the chocolate. So I thought that was really cool too. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you guys came up. You gotta it, get it, it, I yeah. I don't really know you guys, but I'm always proud to see <laughs> people who look just like me just doing like really creative things. Like I really love that. That's so cool. cool. Thank I you. Think. Thank you. So <clears throat> you guys don't have to answer this question. But who's the brains behind all the creative stuff? <laughs> Uh, talk about it. I'll take it. I mean, I'll take it now. I'll take it now. I'll take it. Now. Yeah, you can see it. We, we create together. Yes, we create together. That's, That's the amazing, amazing, correct. correct right. Right. We create together. We do. we do. You know, we tweak each other's ideas. Okay. Yeah, we definitely tweak like each other's ideas. That's, That's good. Like, listen, when we get off of this interview, we still have to live and live together. <laughs> No, so you got to take this answer and be okay with it. Yeah, that's cool. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. And ultimately, it's a collective goal for us both to yeah. do all of this together. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because sometimes he'll come up with something. Sometimes. What, what, uh, no, listen. Sometimes he'll come up with something and I'll be like, uh... I don't know about that angle. And then something that happened like late at night and they'll be like, you know what? That's if we do it like this. Right. The this. tweak, the tweak happens. <laughs> the tweak. So, tweak okay. okay. So this is what I'm gathering. Mr. Little has all the ideas. And Mrs. Little tells Mr. Little how his idea could be better. Is that? It's both though. It is both. That's not it. I she have a lot of ideas. <laughs> no, no, no. no, we You know, I can't get away with that after this. You know, don't set me up like that. Okay? Don't set me up like that. Because she is, uh, she definitely, we tweak each other's ideas. Before. We tweak each other's ideas. Yeah. And it's an amazing process. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, um, in closing, what can we do as a community? What can we do in Cleveland? I mean, I know a few things that we could do, but for you guys, what are some what are some ways that we can continue to support the little grapevine and help you guys be even bigger and better than what you guys are right now? Um, you can definitely follow us on Facebook at the little grapevine. That's when we drop our new blends and things like that. Right now we're like totally booked for virtual wine tastings and private wine tastings until our next batch comes out. However, if you follow us on Facebook, um, also uh, Instagram, the little grapevine, our website is under construction. So that will be coming soon. So if you follow those uh, social media pages, you'll have the updates on uh, when it's okay to kind of go on the website and kind of view our wine list. But we are very personable. Um, so if you are interested in purchasing wine, all you have to do is inbox us on either the IG page, the little grapevine, or on the Facebook page. Or you can email us at the little grapevine at gmail.com. Um, and that way we can kind of set up a consultation, see where your palate is. Uh, we just start doing, starting in December, charcuterie boxes. So it's like the grave box where you get the pepperonis. We can do um, vegan boxes. We can do um, turkey-based um, pepperonis, things like that. But just a beautiful box with meat, cheese, strawberries, you no know, fruit, um, along with a bottle of wine. So we're doing that for the holiday season. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to edit out this one portion of the video. My birthday's on 50 And, you know, I have to send it to someone and say, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I like, and my birthday's coming up, so. Yeah. So what is your And they're black on, so do what you need to do. Yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I think those are amazing ideas, and I want to make sure that everyone that's watching this right now supports you guys, and I want you guys to be able to um, generate generational wealth for your family Absolutely. and your kids, their grandkids and their grandkids. So yes. I'm lucky that you guys are getting into this, and you yeah. started this business as an avid wine drinker. I can now drink black owned <laughs> wine. I love yeah. it. I love it. I love yeah. it. So for those people that do watch um, our Black Owned Brand videos and tune into our station, because we broadcast worldwide, I know you said that the pandemic kind of slowed down your shipping license. Do you guys 
have any idea when you would be able to distribute outside of Cleveland? Uh, we're looking at our, the target is to, by the end of this year, beginning of next year. That's the target. That's what they're telling us with the state. Right. So we're just waiting on them to complete that portion of it. Um, mm-hmm. So we can set it up with FedEx. Um, we want to do it the legal way, of course, yes, yes, right. because the idea is to be in the grocery stores like Kroger's and Dave's and Giant Eagles. So we have to go through a certain level of protocol um, so that we're able to do it that way. But the goal is to be by the beginning of 2021 um, shipping. Yeah. Awesome. And have the e-commerce on our website and everything. Awesome. So we'll make sure that we're on the lookout. We'll like the, in the Facebook page, follow on Instagram, because I'm pretty sure you guys are going to give everyone updates on your shipping. Yes. And that can be purchased in stores. I'm going to be right there taking pictures with my bottles. Like, yes. <laughs> oh. Lucrate time. Yes. <laughs> yes. I really appreciate you guys so much for taking time out to do this interview with me. And as I said, I look forward to seeing you guys be bigger and, you know, creating generational wealth for your family. So thank you guys so much and congratulations. Thank you. For you. Thank you. And what's your palette? Yes, what's your palette so we can get I you? I love red wine. I'm okay. really big on Shiraz. Like that, okay. I always go with oh. but, but red wine, I'm, if it's red, if, I don't like sweet red wine. So. Okay. Not sweet. Like yes. Yeah. Blush. Like a, like a Malbec. Yeah, I like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. That's all me. All me. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, and I just want to thank you uh, for just, you know, giving us this time and this interview. I really appreciate and it. And the platform. And the That's platform. great. Thank you guys so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Listen, as I say, you guys look like me. We're both from Cleveland. Let's do it. And I'm, I believe in supporting my people. And this is one of the ways I'm able to do that. So I appreciate you guys for allowing me to do this. And like I said, again, thank you. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. You thank too. you. Thank you so God bless. Peace. You too. Thank you. Peace out. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.